Seven in attendance. The fight of the night, no-brainer, co-main event, Joanna and, and Zhang. Uh, Benil and O'Malley uh, got the other bonuses, 50 grand. And then uh, the 50-50 um, raffle tonight raised $52,000, and that's for a three-square food bank here in Las Vegas. Who's got the first question? Okay. Dana, uh, main event was a bit odd to say the least. Uh, not, a, I guess, maybe what we were hoping for. Yeah. Where, where, where do you lay blame on that? What's, I mean, what's your take on why that fight played out the way it did? Well, there's two things. That was a tough act to follow after the co-main event, and then uh, I believe that Israel Adesanya fights to the level of his opponent. The Anderson Silva fight was was similar to that. Um, and then you think about the Gaslam fight was a war. You know, Gaslam goes after him and tries to take his head off. Um, Whitaker's going after him, trying to take his head off. That fight was great. And you better believe that Paulo Costa's going to go after him. And uh, that fight should be ridiculous. Yes. You know, I, I expected Yo Romero. You heard all week. I was literally talking more about the co-main event than I was the main event. I knew that that fight was going to be ridiculous. You have these two incredibly talented savages um, who wanted that belt more than anything. And, you know, I didn't know if there was going to be a knockout or a submission or something like that, but I knew I was begging people to watch that. Fight. You know me, man. When I sell fights, I don't beg anybody to watch anything. I was literally begging people to watch this fight. <clears throat> um, and it was. It was incredible. But I, th I think that I I'm, oh, what I was saying is I'm shocked that – that, that Romero knew this was his last opportunity at, at, a, at a world championship. I thought he was going to come out like a bat out of hell, put tons of pressure on him, shoot takedowns, go for, you know, try, try to knock him out. He did literally none of that. So if you're out of Sonya, he fought the, the smart fight. You stay on the outside. He chopped that leg apart, and he picked his punches and, and, and did what he did. Um, you know, Romero did a lot of moving around and acting like, I'm trying to fight, but he never really did. Yeah. Costa was back here earlier tonight, and he said that uh, he, he thought the tentative plan was July 11th for that fight. Yeah. Um, he, he's he, got to calm down. I, I want to hear from a doctor. Again, they told me that he, he went crazy tonight and jumped over the K, gate and was going crazy. We, 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 we threw him out, um, you know, and I just had to calm those guys down in the back. You know, he wants this fight so bad. Um, when he's healthy... And a doctor calls me and tells me, not his, like, friend from Brazil, when a doctor calls me and tells me that he's healthy, we'll make this fight. This is the fight to make. This is the fight that I want to see. And I guarantee you, when that fight happens, you'll hear me going crazy about that one. That fight's going to be ridiculous because Paulo Costa will move forward. He will not stop punching. He's going to throw big shots and try to knock him out, and Israel will fight. Nice. The co-main event, as you said, I mean, one of the greatest fights I think we've ever seen. Um, I want to ask you, I mean, when a fight's that good, as a promoter, it seems like the easy thing to be would say, let's run it back again, because who wouldn't sign up to see them fight again? Do you look at that as an option, or, or does it not make sense? Did you see what those two girls look like after that fight? Man, they're both in the hospital right now. They did not go to a press conference. They did not talk to press. They both went straight to the hospital. They need to go home, take time, heal up, and everything else before I even mention a fight with either one of them again, you know? Nice. And last thing for me, Dana, there were reports of a, an incident backstage involving Brian Ortega. Do you have any details? There was a lot of crazy shit going on tonight. It was, it was weird. Um, yeah, he, him and the zombie got in a fight, which is completely unlike both of their personalities. And uh, zombie doesn't even speak English, so I don't know what the hell he could have said that would... Uh, get Ortega to start going crazy, but um, yeah, it was weird. Were there like punches thrown? Or I guess so. It happened right over in the fighter section. It wasn't backstage, right? It wasn't backstage, was it? No, it was, it was over in the fighter section. It happened during the fight. Wow. Any, any legal involvement or just kind of fighters? Listen, guys, we want, yeah, we don't want anybody getting arrested. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Dave. Dana, right here. Um, just to elaborate on the co-main event a little bit, I mean, you had said, as you mentioned, coming into this fight, that you were more excited for this than anything on the card. Um, is this you know, the best women's MMA fight you've ever seen? It's one of the best fights I've ever seen. Um, but yes, yeah, I think so. Um, right here off the top of my head, I would have to say yes, best women's fight I've ever seen, one of the best fights I've ever seen. Can you give us any insight on you know, the level of interest in China for Wally in this fight? This, this show performed very well everywhere. 
This, this show killed it. And I, and I got to say this. I was telling Ioli this earlier, man. I love our fans. Our fans are, are awesome. You think about, you know, the stuff that's going on right now. And, you know, one of these reporters tried to say something about this the other day at the thing, and they booed him out of the place. Um, everybody showed our ticket sales this week were exactly like a regular week. You know, and the walk-up was huge tonight. Um, our fans are incredible, man. I think back to when we did the first fight in Las Vegas, it was the week of September 11th, and we, we were sold out. The fight had been on sale for months. The fight was sold out, and Las Vegas was a ghost town. Nobody was doing anything. Nobody was flying. We didn't know if anybody was even going to show up to the, to the event. The place was packed. There wasn't an open seat anywhere, and it reminds me of tonight. So... Thank you to the fans. You guys are incredible. Any other performances jump off the page? Uh, Sean O'Malley. Came O'Malley out. looked good, man. I think that guy's been off for a couple years to come back in and look as sharp as he did. Uh, I, I, I got to talk to the boys, but um, I, I want to turn him around as quick as possible and get him back in there. Yeah, do you think we see him take like a significant step up in competition? Or? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see, we'll see who's, who's available and who we think. And Like I said, I got to talk to the matchmakers about that one and see if we all agree. I don't just just say oh, I'm going to do this. I talk to them, and then we talk about it. We argue, and then we figure out what's right. And last thing outside of this card, uh, we saw Max Holloway and Alexander Volkanovsky both in the crowd, and they kind of got the split screen treatment on uh, the in-house thing. Is that fight close? That rematch close to being done? Uh, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but I think so. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Not being Perth. Yeah. Thank you. Who's next? Kev. Right over here, Dana. Oh, hey. During the years that you've been promoting fights, you've built a lot of champions and, and built a lot of careers. What are some of the challenges you think moving forward with a guy like Israel after a performance like tonight? And what do you think is going to be so easy about promoting Zhang Weili in the future based on her performance tonight? Yeah, listen, he wanted Romero on his resume. He got it. He won the fight. And uh, you have to you take these things fight by fight. Listen, if anybody thinks I'm wrong, raise your hand right now and we can talk about it. The Costa fight's going to be insane. The Costa fight will be ridiculous. Costa will come forward. He will throw big punches. He will throw combinations. He will not stop punching. And Israel Adesanya is going to have to fight him. And I'm telling you right now, just like I told you, Weili Zhang <clears throat> and Joanna was going to be insane, Costa versus Adesanya will be a ridiculous fight. I guarantee it. I absolutely positively guarantee it. So uh, he got what he wanted. He got him on his resume. He beat him. Um, and uh, on to Costa. You know, a lot of us think that Adesanya is sort of on the cusp of being one of the biggest superstars that you guys have in the sport. You've seen a lot of guys come and go, GSPs, Anderson Silvas, and then there's other guys like Demetrius Johnson uh, that maybe don't take off, but they're great. At what point do you really start to see these champions evolve from, you know, just being a champion to, you know, a world-class superstar? Well, again, I think that, you know, you, you, you continue to fight and you continue to win. When he goes into the Costa fight, he'll be 19-0, and 0, um, and then... Whoever comes out of that Romero Costa fight, the winner, either one of those guys are going to be big stars. If he if if Costa beats Israel Adesanya, he's going to blow up in Brazil. Then it starts to spill over into the other countries, you know. And obviously, if Adesanya beats Costa, it will be in spectacular fashion because Costa is going to try to decapitate him. Thank you. I can't wait for that fight. If you can't tell. When I'm sitting here today talking about this, um, the matchmakers didn't love that fight and didn't want to make that fight. They did not want to make Romero uh, versus uh, Adesanya. But the goofy fan in me said, are you shitting me? Come on. This will be, be a a fun fight to do. And the fact that he wants to fight a guy that nobody else wants to fight, now, hindsight is twenty twenty. Probably shouldn't have done that fight. We should have waited for, for Costa, but oh well, we did it. What was their rationale that they didn't want to make the fight? That I didn't? Oh, they didn't? They, they didn't. said it doesn't make sense. You can't tell the matchmakers anything that doesn't make sense. Everything has to make sense to those two, you know? How did you score the women's fight? Fuck, Kevin, I was so into that fight. I, 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 did, I didn't really score it, but I... I, I 
me and Downey Jr. were like giddy little girls getting ready for that fight. And I think when it went in, I think we were both feeling like it was even going into the fifth round. But I, I honestly couldn't tell you. I, I didn't really score it. I was just caught up in it. Uh, obviously, Joanna had a good fight against Michelle Waterson the last time. But do you feel like she raised her game even tonight to, to get to where she was? Joanna, uh, Joanna has looked. She comes to fight. She's incredibly talented. Um, she comes to win. She comes to hurt you. She comes to bust you up. And, uh, you know, she's one of the baddest to ever do it. And Wei Lee's, uh, you know, her eye was closing, I think, in the first round, if I remember correctly. Yeah. She showed a lot of toughness in the fight, too. I mean, you know, obviously she got battered uh, as the fight went on. But even early on when she couldn't see, she was still uh, moving forward. Well, not only, not, not only toughness, her cardio was unbelievable. That was her first time ever in the championship rounds. And she looked damn good in those rounds. And what was weird is the first round, it looked like her, her, her face started getting whatever. And, and this eye was swelling up a little bit. But then, boom. All of a sudden, Yoana looked way worse than Whaley. And uh, I was like, God damn. When did that happen? <laughs> and what, have you had a chance to talk to Yoel? And he, did he say anything to you afterward? No, I didn't talk to him. Do you have any thought on like what would possess a guy at 42 years old, knowing how many title fights he's had, to fight that way? Right from the bell. He came out and just stood there with his hands up. Right. Makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. I thought he was going to come out like a madman. You were pretty pissed off uh, in Abu Dhabi after the Anderson Silva Demi and Maya fight. Was your level of disappointment the same with this one as you were after that? Yeah, this was a terrible fight. I mean, if you if you look at the the UFC as a whole for as long as we've been doing it, you can literally put in one hand shitty fights that we've done. You know what I mean? And. Um, it takes two to fight, man. If somebody goes out there and doesn't want to engage and doesn't want to fight, and if you're a guy like, um, if, you, if you're a guy like Adesanya, you know, he's got so much more on the line. This is the way the guy's acting. He's going to stay back and he's going to pick him apart the way that he did. You know, that leg was destroyed. We'll see when he comes walking in tonight when you guys see him. I'm sure he's not going to be, you know. He's not going to have a pep in his step tonight. That leg is, is, is hurting. And, uh, you know, Adesanya did what he had to do, in my opinion. Why run in there and go crazy against a guy that dangerous when that guy's not fighting at all? Last thing I wanted to ask you is you announced uh, UFC 165 going into the Hall of Fame tonight. And I couldn't help but think the next fight that you had in the – Cage afterwards was Joanna and uh, and uh, Wei Li and and I you have to think that that fight may someday be in the Hall of Fame. I mean that was that caliber fight, wouldn't you yeah. agree? Yeah, that's definitely a Hall of Fame fight, 100 percent. I mean, I'm sure you guys had the same thing. My phone was going crazy during that fight. Everybody was blowing me up, um, you know, saying it's the greatest fight they've ever seen. <coughs> Who's next? Hey, Dan, on you right here. Hey, buddy. Yeah, good to see you. You too. Hey, um, last June you came on my podcast with LVSportsBiz.com, and you actually talked up Wally Zong a lot, if, yeah. if I recall. I mean, you were really high on her even before she won the belt. And I'm wondering at this point, once she gets healed up, what do you see for her future with UFC? And I'm wondering if she might be in the same category of uh, an Amanda Nunes, who's a very talented woman fighter, uh, great personality, uh, and I was wondering, like, what could be UFC can do to make these women a little more marketable to, like, mainstream America, you know? Yeah, <clears throat> so um, we always knew she was special. We knew she was special, and uh, we started moving her the, the way you move somebody that you think is special. Th then this crazy thing happened where she was ranked number six, I think, and all the people in front of her either had a fight, just lost the fight, something like that. And she ended up fighting. She was in line for the title to fight Jessica Andrade, who is an absolute beast. And we were saying, is she ready for her? We don't know, but she's next in line. Let's do it. So we decided to do it, and the result was incredible. Tonight, she went in against the best ever from that division. 
right? The woman who built that division, defended the title five times. And Yoana Young Jacek came in in ridiculous, incredible shape. The amount of experience she has over Weili Zhang is massive. And you saw how good she looked tonight. Um, I, I only expect her to get better, look better. And I think she made a lot of fans tonight, you know? She got a good pop from the crowd when she walked out. The fans were behind her. And she murdered it in China, which is more important to me than the U.S. You know, great people like her in the U.S. I love it, and I want people to like her everywhere, but China was a, was, was a huge success. Um, we will continue to move her around, and, and, and do. there's a certain pattern. When you're building somebody and you're trying to build them into a star, there's a pattern in what you do. We did it with Conor McGregor. We've done it with, with, with Ronda. We've done it with all the greats, and um, we're going to do it with her. Dana over here. Yeah. Um, this was uh, Zhang Wei Li's first big pay per view event, uh, first pay per view ever. Also, she had to deal with with the whole coronavirus and all the media and all that. Can you just talk about? I know she had an amazing performance. Can you talk? But can you talk about how she dealt with everything outside of? of yeah, the you know, she had to deal with. She went to Thailand first, then she had to go over to Abu Dhabi, then she came here. And once she got here, she needed to be here early anyway, which I don't think her team really knew. You need to get to Vegas early to acclimate for the time, the weather. It's super dry here, and it and it messes with fighters. Um, so so it ended up being perfect that we got her in here earlier. Um, the other things that she had to deal with was the pressure. She, she knows who the hell she's fighting. She knows who you want to know J check is and what she's capable of. And uh, the other thing she dealt with uh, pretty well too, but you could tell she was uncomfortable with it, was the mind games that you want to play. Joanna started trying to play the mind games with her and everything else. This was her first time going five rounds. Um, she dealt with a lot of shit, you're right. And she, she she handled it like like a true champion. And, you know, we have a, an American perspective, obviously, being here in America. But uh, I'm, I know you guys have probably done your research in, in as far as, like, the Chinese market. Uh, how big of a star can she be? She's going to be a massive star. You know, just like the, the, the fighting sport is so crazy, you got to keep winning. If you keep winning, you're going to be a star. Even guys we had a hard time. I, I only used to terrorize me all the time back in the day saying, when is Anderson Silva going to become a star? When is Anderson Silva going to do this? When is Anderson Silva going to do that? Then he kicked Vitor Belfort in the face with that crazy shit that nobody had ever seen before, and boom, he blew up and exploded and became a huge star. And talking about the main event, you did say you know it takes two to fight, um, but it almost seems like you feel like uh, the lack of action in the main event was, was mainly due to Yo Romero's part. Uh, do you feel that's accurate? I do. Yeah, I, I feel like Yo Romero, he literally went out and stood in the middle of, when the bell rang in the first round, just stood there with his hands up. You know what I mean? You, you're, you're going in and facing the world champion. This is your last shot at a championship. You shouldn't even be here getting this title fight. It should be Paulo Costa. If he didn't get hurt, you don't even get this opportunity. You go in and you do everything you can to win that fight. He literally did none of that. He, he plans on continue fighting for, for a long time. He says he still has 10 more years left in him. Uh, is there a path for him to get back to the title, or you feel like this was it? <sighs> I, I, a path back to the title after that performance? I mean, you're crazy even asking that question right now. He looked terrible tonight. He, 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 he looked terrible. He, he, he literally gave up an opportunity tonight. Um, you know, maybe he comes back in his next fight and looks like Yo Romero. But if he doesn't, I, I wouldn't expect him to fight another 10 years looking like that. And switching gears, we spoke to Daniel Cormier earlier in the week. He says he's back to training and starting to feel healthy again. Um, once that Stipe trilogy fight, is that the fight to make? And do you have any update on, on that end? Um, no, not yet. I know Stipe is still not hurt. And we got to get Cormier, get Cormier going here uh, uh, soon. Um, or he's going to put on so much weight he won't be able to fight. So will, will an interim belt be, be in place, or, or will you guys wait till Stipe gets healthy? What's sort of uh, in your mind there? I don't know. we got to see, see what happens, and we got to find out realistically how long Stipe is going to be out. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, over here. Hey, buddy. Interesting statistic here. Uh, every single fighter from the red corner won tonight. Huh. 
Don't know if that means much, but uh, you know, I've never seen it before. Right. So, question for you: We had an amazing fight with Joseph Benavides and uh, Davison Figueredo. Yeah. Uh, the winner is the guy that didn't make weight, and the title is vacant. Is there any plan for that, and uh, who would it involve? Yeah, I think you got to do the fight again. You know, you got to do the fight again. It's fair. It's the only fair thing to do with, with those guys, and uh, we'll figure it out, and we'll definitely do it. Makes sense. The referee warned, I think, both Israel and Yoel tonight. Is there anything you wish he could have done further, or was there anything he could have, a second warning, or would you believe in implementing like an old-school pride yellow card, or what do you think might be? No, get, listen, guys, the fight sucked, right? The fight yeah. sucked. <laughs> yeah, it did. But you just came off the craziest shit you've ever seen in your life. The energy in that building was through the roof. Those guys, uh, you know, th they were walking into a, a no-win situation as it was. You know what I mean? Um, I, I don't think it was so bad that we're like, God, the ref sh should have done this, the ref should have I thought the ref did a good job. You know, there were a couple times when they weren't engaging, and that's probably when he warned them and told them to fight. But tough act to follow. After watching that, 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 that last fight, it, it was... Uh, it, it, was a, it, was a, it was a tough situation for both of them to be in. Pretty much. Yes. Yeah, we were all the sick. fight sucked. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, what did you think of Neil Magny? A lot of people didn't think he was going to come back and do anything against Li Jinglong. I yeah. think it was pretty amazing. Huh? He looked good tonight. I mean, Neil Magny is one of those guys that's always tough, man, and he's always right there. And, uh, you know, he's the guy that you got to get through if you want to break into, like, the top seven. You know, he, he's, he's, he's a tough guy to get past. Absolutely. Last question for me. Any decision of the very few we had tonight that you disagreed with? I don't know. Th th nothing stood out in my mind where I'm like, that was insane. Yeah. You know, usually, usually when that happens, we're this deep into the press conference already, and I did three other shows before I came here. People would have been talking about it. Sure. You're the first guy to mention it, so I don't, I, don't, I don't think anything was crazy tonight. I know I said last, but would you have been disappointed had Joanna received the decision in that fight? It was a, it was a crazy close fight. How, how did you guys go? Did anybody have Joanna win in this fight? A few of you guys, yeah. Yeah. Amazing show, though. It was a split decision. Yeah. That's the way it goes. Listen, when you're in a title fight, right, you have to do everything you can to win that. Not that these girls didn't. I mean, that's fucking stupid of me to even say but um you know it's just you never know which way it's going to go and you just have to do everything in your power to try to stop that thing from going to the judges scorecard without a doubt great show thank you appreciate it dana how you doing what's up shmo yesterday at the ufc 249 press conference habib and tony ferguson it got heated habib kicked the belt that tony put on the floor mcgregor couldn't even get him to flinch just want to get your thoughts on that and how it all went down and habib losing his temper yeah it was interesting yeah when he kicked the belt he said that belt's as fake as you um and you saw Habib normally just has that, ah, ah, listen to this guy, ah. And then he did start getting pissed off halfway through the, uh, through the press conference. Um, Going to be a fun fight, man. It's a fun fight. Tony is a super talented guy that can fight from wherever the fight goes, on the feet, on the ground, spinning stuff, submissions. I mean, the guy's got everything. And Habib is Habib. He's, he's you know, one of the greatest ever. And uh, this is the fight everybody wants to see. This is the fight we've tried to make a hundred times. And this is the fight that needs to happen right here, right now. Number one versus number two. How close were we to get Darren Till to fight on this fight card? I know Jaron Cadenier tore the pectoral muscle. He was out. There was some talk back and forth. Maybe there were some visa issues. What's next for Darren Till? Is it Dublin at that aug in August for that fight night card? What's, what's next for Darren? Yeah, I don't remember how close it was. We were talking about him fighting in a few different places. <clears throat> and yeah, I think Dublin is where it's going to happen. And lastly, I thought Paulo Costa was kicked out. He's standing right next to you. No, he didn't get kicked out. They were kicking him out of the stadium, out, out of the arena, because he was losing his fucking mind, and it scares people. You know what I mean? Understood. Is he here? Oh, right yeah, next. yeah. Look at him. Fucking guy was going crazy, and look at him. I, nobody wants that shit. Everybody gets scared. So we had to, we had to take it. No, no, don't, don't, no excuse. I do what? Go, I will read it, sir. I will destroy him for the earth. Yeah, he was going fucking crazy. So they, so they brought him out into the back and tried to calm him down. And then Valid 
I don't even need to say anything. You know, he, right? He's fucking nuts. So you got these two going fucking crazy out in the arena, right? Yeah. It's my night. Shitty fight, and then these two start fucking flipping out. Dana, huh? right, Dana right in front of you. Yeah. Um, can you just talk a little bit about being a promoter that has Joanna on your roster? I mean, she goes out there. She's, this is her fourth title fight in a, lot, in a row that she's lost, but she still comes back better. She improves. She puts on great shows. So what does it mean to you as a promoter to have her on your Yeah, I'm, I'm incredibly lucky. She's, she's amazing. She's an amazing human being. And if you look at her evolution since she's come to the UFC, um, you know, look at her on social media. She's incredible on social media. Um, you know, and, and you can honestly tell when you watch Joanna and what she's doing, she enjoys herself. She's loving her life. She's having fun. She got another title shot. She came in dead serious, gotten in phenomenal shape. She looks so good. She made the weight cut easy, um, played the mind games like a pro like she does, and did everything she could to try to win this fight. We're, 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 we're incredibly lucky to have somebody like her, somebody who, who built that division, started it, and, you know, after all these years, can get me that excited for a fucking fight, man. So awesome. And uh, you, you mentioned Brian Ortega earlier. Uh, last month, you said that you guys were interested in making a fight with Zabit in April. Is there any update on that? Or could we see a Korean zombie Ortega fight considering everything that's gone down? Yeah, probably that fight. Probably the, the zombie, I, I, I think. I, I don't remember exactly all, you know, all these things in my head that we're working on right now. We literally have fights made all the way up to like, is Hunter in here? What do we got? July what? Huh? Yeah, we got fights made all the way up to International Fight Week. So off the top of my head right now, I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. And Dana, right in the middle. Yes, ma'am. Hey there. So obviously you're interested in the Chinese market for Zhang and her actually becoming um, a bigger superstar there. But you also said that there's a pattern that you follow in, in basically making stars right. out of some of these fighters. What would be next in that pattern for you for Wei Li? Probably take her to New York, Madison Square Garden. And then also, so the two women were taken to the hospital. They're going to be suspended for a, a given amount of time. Who knows what their injuries are? Who are your 2A and 2B then who we could see next in that strawweight division? You've got Tatiana out there. Obviously, Rose is looking to come back as well. Right. Rose is fighting. Ro Rose and Andrade are fighting. Tatiana's hurt. Um something wrong with her neck that we're trying to figure out and uh i don't know we'll, 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 we'll see how this thing plays out obviously the rose and drage fight has to happen and uh these two have to heal up hey buddy hey dana how you doing can i ask Good. you a little bit kind of looking ahead you mentioned july is is kind of how far out you are but connor was here a month ago whatever saying that he wanted to be the first one to fight at Allegiant stadium how does that work with you and kind of with Bedane and those guys with the Raiders schedule and the NFL schedule and trying to be the first, I guess, combat sport in that, in that new uh, Allegiant Stadium. How does all I, that work? I don't want to be first. I've never wanted to be first. I wasn't the first guy to run out and get a TV deal. I wasn't the first guy. To, I, I wanted to be right. I want, to, I want it to be successful. So I'm not going to bring an event there until I know that it's big enough to go to that stadium and uh, it can actually be very successful. So... Um, you know, I, I, I can't look into the future and say, oh, this fight's definitely going to happen. It's all determined by whether guys win or lose. And as guys continue to win, it builds the next fight and builds the next fight, and we'll see what's next, you know? And Connor, we're trying to figure out if he wants to fight again or if he's going to wait or what's going to happen. Um, so I, I really don't have any answers. And you got to see what happens with, with Habib and Tony. But if that thing played out, Connor versus Habib will be the biggest fight ever in the history of combat sports. I'm not just talking UFC, ever. It'll beat Floyd versus uh, Connor. Thank you. We good? Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Have a good night.